from Facebook. So if you've been vaccinated, can you get COVID? Okay, so um, if you have been vaccinated, you can get COVID. It does not happen very often, um, but let's like layer that a little bit. The vaccine cannot give you COVID, first and foremost, okay? Just to be super clear about that part. Impossible for the vaccine to give you COVID. But the vaccine, um, even these very, very excellent, very protective vaccines, about 95% protective in the trials, right? 94, 95% for, for Pfizer and Moderna. And that means that in the trials, it's about a one in 20 chance that if you get exposed to COVID, you still could get COVID, even mm -hmm. if you were fully vaccinated. The good news is that we see these vaccines, all three of them, COVID, I'm sorry, uh, Moderna, Pfizer, and J&J, &J, we see all three of these vaccines amazingly protective against the severe outcomes of COVID, right. almost 100% protective against getting hospitalized or, or dying from COVID. Um, but it is possible, um, it doesn't happen very often, but it is possible to get COVID. And that is part of why we continue recommending, while we still have a lot of COVID around, uh, that when you're in public spaces, et cetera, you wear that mask um, and if you are interacting with someone who has not yet been vaccinated and is at high risk you should absolutely keep wearing that mask um, and as our case numbers go down right as we really sort of get past covid the chance that you will be exposed to covid will be even lower and we this won't be as much of a concern um, but what we call it a breakthrough case uh, when we have um, examples of people yeah. who ha are fully vaccinated two weeks post, because that's the other thing. Some people say I'm vaccinated, but they've only gotten one of their doses or they're not two weeks post. You're not fully protected at that point. And so definitely we see people getting COVID there. Um, but we call it a breakthrough case if someone yeah. is fully vaccinated and yet they get COVID. And we have had cases of that, a few, um, you know, in the range, you know, last I was looking here in Chicago, you know, 20 something among the, um, you know, we've done 1.1 million vaccinations here in Chicago. And um, when I last looked at it, I think we had 23 examples of this. Uh, most of those people were actually asymptomatic. Um, they didn't have symptoms. We were testing them because they work in a hospital or they're at a long-term care facility. We continue to do a lot of testing in high-risk settings. Um, some of them did have some symptoms. Um, nobody has been hospitalized or died or gotten seriously ill. Um, but um, it it is a small piece of this, and I don't want people to freak out about this, right? Um, uh, the, the vaccine continues to work just as it has look, has, is expected to work. Um, and again, if everybody's vaccinated, not a big concern. But part of the reason you keep wearing your mask, please, in public or when you're gathering with people who are not vaccinated, um, is that there remains you know, a small chance um, that you could have COVID. And one of the differences here is that you know, I just said, just to kind of put this in the science perspective, that when you've been vaccinated, um, you've taught your immune system how to recognize that, that COVID virus and like fight it off, right? Mm -hmm. So it'll keep COVID by and large from like getting down into your lungs, which is when we really see people get sick from COVID. But COVID, if it, you know, a little bit then. in your nose here, right? And it's sort of there for a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, we are, you know, we continue to see good evidence that these vaccines are, um, are, are protective against the potential of spreading COVID, but not 100%. Uh, and this is sort of comes along with this, right? You've got a few people who continue to get COVID if you, if you test um, them. And uh, it's a small piece of this. And I don't want people to take this, please, as a reason not to get vaccinated or think that the vaccines aren't working. They're working astonishingly well. Yeah. Um, but, but And a much higher efficacy rate than... Like oh, the flu I mean, vaccine, right? much higher than the flu vaccine because we have to make a flu vaccine every single year because of variants and there's a lot more changes and all the rest of this. But, um, you know, these are amazing. Like it's, it's talking about, uh, you know, protection rates that are in the, you know, 70 to 90 percent range is like really, really good for a vaccine. And that paired with rapid and widespread vaccination in the setting of hopefully decreasing cases soon, um, yeah. you know, will be, we'll be great. taking a close what? look at those numbers. That's right. Yeah. Okay. John Special, or is it Speciale, uh, from Facebook, saw a news article that J&J &J is coming in big numbers on Monday. Is hmm. this true? Is this true? Um, so we are seeing much more J&J. &J. So let me, um, let me do a quick update actually on, on vaccine supply, because that's probably people yeah. are interested as we move to 1C. Um, so we'll take the J&J &J part first. Um, 
about three weeks ago is when J&J &J got approved and everybody across the country got a pretty nice initial bolus of J&J. &J. We got about 23,000 doses of it uh, all in one week here in Chicago. Um, and we use them to start our homebound program. We use them to uh, do a lot of the strike team, bringing to some of the manufacturing settings for essential workers where we've seen outbreaks. We use it at O'Hare where we had a lot of those 1B essential workers um, and wanted to get that vaccination done. And we gave some to providers. Um, we then didn't really get any J&J &J for a couple of weeks here. Uh, we got just a little bit this last week, um, I, I, I think like 3,000 doses, not a lot. Um, but this coming week, we're getting uh, 15,700 Pfizer doses uh, mm -hmm. for the week, which is um, good, which is certainly much more than we've gotten for the last few weeks. Um, it's still less than the Moderna or Pfizer that we're getting, just to be clear. And oh, so you, you said we're getting 15,000, you meant J&J. &J. Oh, sorry, what did I say? Thank you. Yeah, yes. you said Pfizer. But oh, apologies. You Yes, I meant, I meant J&J. &J. We're getting 15,700 J&J &J first doses this coming week. Um, we're getting 26,500 Moderna first doses, uh, and that has been it flat. We've not changed. seen an increase in Moderna in two months. Like, just, it's been flat, 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 flat. Um, and then our Pfizer did go up nicely, too. We're getting 45,630 first doses of Pfizer, mm -hmm. uh, and that's up somewhere in the 8,000-ish right. range mm -hmm. um, kind of for the week. And that's good because, you know, this week we had almost no increase. We got one more box of Pfizer. 1,100 doses of Pfizer was the only increase we saw to stretch across the entire city for the entire week in terms of first doses. Yeah. These are all first doses. And so... Um, that's good. But the other thing is that pharmacies are getting vaccine directly. Um, and, and so Walgreens in particular here in Chicago is getting about 17,000 doses of, of vaccine for this week directly from the federal government. Mm -hmm. um, Juul is getting about 5,000 doses. And then now both Walmart and CVS are coming in mm -hmm. in the sort of 1,700 to 2,000 dose range. Um, and so all of these you know, we use vaccine as soon as it gets to Chicago, right? I mean, our efficacy numbers are fantastic here. Every single week, you know, we we set a goal, we've hit it every week of getting 95% of the vaccine that we get allocated out the door uh, to appointments, to providers, and then we set a second goal of all the vaccine, um, at least 85% of it, we want to see it in arms and reported within a week of delivery. We've hit that week after week after week. And in fact, we've been, I think last week we were at 94% of the vaccine was reported and in, in, in arms within the week. And yes, that includes the United Center. And yes, that includes all these other efforts. Like we are very good at getting vaccine into arms very quickly here. Um, but the thing that has been holding us back is just, is just that vaccine supply. So seeing more of it ramp up is good. Um, we've got all the capacity in the world to handle vaccine, uh, hundreds of providers who we still have not yet been able to give vaccine to. Um, so, you know, I feel good as we head into 1C on Monday, having seen that increase and hearing that it's going to keep going up. Uh, and you'll be hearing more about, you know, some plans for some additional, you know, larger mass vaccination type sites. And you'll be hearing much more about work with other community spaces and partners. And, you know, we've got it all planned out uh, just as soon as we can see vaccine coming here. But yeah, well, there is some more J&J &J coming. Um, and we would like to very soon be able to start making some of that available publicly, um, you know, at a at one of the larger mass vaccination sites or pods, for example. So um, a little more to come on that, but we're anticipating probably in the next couple of weeks, um, just as you've been able to, you know, get Pfizer when you sign up or, you know, whatnot. Um, I'm very hopeful that J&J &J will be some of that. And we're going to keep using it for a lot of our essential workers and the strike team work um, where, it, where it really makes sense.